Hello everyone, here in this lecture I am going to highlight briefly on the different type of spontaneous abortion. So in this we will discuss in a tabular manner what is the basic difference between the sub categories of spontaneous abortion. So before we start with this session just go through with its previous part uh, where I have dealt with its definition, different classification and the reason behind this abortion. So the spontaneous abortion is again divided into two that is isolated that uh, it is appearing for a single time and in recurrent uh, it means there is a consecutive loss of three pregnancy okay so that is the habitual abortion. So whether it is isolated or recurrent it is again subcategorized into five threatened abortion, inevitable abortion, incomplete abortion, complete abortion and missed abortion. So what is the basic difference between these five that I have dealt here with a very important key features. So let's talk about it. Firstly, what is the definition of these all type of abortion? So first feature is the definition. Threatened abortion. So this is the clinical entity where the continuation of pregnancy is possible. Yes, although it is a type of abortion, but this is the type where we can uh, receive the threat, we can aware and uh, we can manage it properly and make the pregnancy continue till term. So here the clinical entity is that where we can continue the pregnancy. Okay, so this is the threatened abortion. So this is the clinical entity where recovery is possible. Okay, second is inevitable abortion. It is the type where uh, it is unavoidable, it cannot be controlled, the progress of abortion is started and it cannot be reversed. Okay, and the third type is incomplete, where the name suggests partially the product of conceptus out from the cavity and partly it remain in the cavity itself. So it is incomplete, means the abortion process started but it is not finished, it is in a progress because something left remain in the cavity. So that is incomplete. Fourth type is the complete abortion. So complete name suggests that is everything is comes out as in form of mass or maybe in form of severe massive bleeding. Okay. So in either of the condition the cavity is all together is empty now because nothing is left remain. So this is the complete abortion and the fifth type is missed. It means the fetus is dead inside and it is lying within the cavity for a variable period of time, maybe for days or weeks. So it is being missed and but ultimately it is not live inside, it is dead. Okay, so this is the missed abortion. So first feature that is the definition. On the basis of definition, we define the different type of abortion. Second feature that is bleeding status and the pain on the basis of that we just compare the different types in threatened abortion what happened there is only a mild spotting is there and there may be a fresh blood that spot or there may be a brownish discharge okay so there is a spotting as well as mild cramp in lower abdomen could be seen okay and in inevitable abortion there is a mild to moderate bleeding the bleeding is quite heavy in comparison to the threatened abortion and as the woman bleeds more there is a more colicky pain that uh, is located in the lower abdomen area okay so colicky pain could be seen and an in incomplete abortion there is comparatively massive or heavy bleeding okay so bleeding is moderate to severe or it can be too severe that the woman can land up in shock so she may have the features of shock like her blood pressure can be dropped, pulse rate could be rise and she looks pale. So shock feature could be seen with the incomplete type of abortion because the bleeding is so heavy, incomplete. Okay. And pain along with that when the bleeding is too heavy then the pain is also too severe okay, which is located again in the lower abdominal region but it is colicky and sharp stabbing like pain okay cramping like pain could be seen that is severe okay complete abortion in fourth type 
as the woman can suggest that she had uh, massive bleeding or she just expel out whole the product of conceptus and now what happened there is no bleeding because it was there the bleeding was there previously but now at present when she came for clinical examination there there is no bleeding so the bleeding is absent as all product of conceptus are removed okay they all are being expelled out so there is no bleeding and as as nothing is left inside the cavity there is no pain as well because nothing is there to expel so pain is also subsides so no pain and no bleeding in complete abortion now in missed abortion what happened as the woman is also being not aware that she is being missed with this pregnancy so there is again no bleeding and no pain but sometime there may be a brownish vaginal discharge that could be seen okay that she can report it now the third feature that distinguish these different type of abortion is the per vaginal examination or the size of the uterus so on pv examination we can find out in threatened abortion that the os the internal os is closed okay very important if it is not closed but always the pregnancy can't be continued till term okay so in threatened the os remain closed and the height of the uterus is correspond to the week of gestation very importantly it is it means the week of gestation and the height of the uterus are equal to each other okay so it is equal because no bleeding is there there is no heavy bleeding that decreases its size so height is almost equal it inevitable abortion the os is open open that's why the bleeding is more yes so here the os is open but although the os is open mostly the height actually the height of the uterus correspond with the week of gestation sometime it may be less but mostly it is correspond with the week of gestation in inevitable abortion in incomplete abortion what happened as some parts comes out some remain inside so actually once the bleeding is there the os is usually opens so internal os in incomplete is open but the height actually uh, decreases in size the height of the uterus is less in comparison to the week of gestation because some part is also comes out so because of that the height remains smaller in comparison to the week of gestation and lastly in the missed abortion as the it is being missed so women is also not aware of that and the fetus is also shrinked it is mummified macerated the liquor amna is also reabsorbed so that's why the height is also goes down so in this missed the os remain close because there is no bleeding and the height actually less in comparison to the week of gestation because of dead fetus so this is the third feature that is the per vaginal examination and the size of the uterus now the another feature on the basis of that we can identify which type of abortion is that is the trans vaginal sonography a very gold standard technique that distinguishes between them so in threatened abortion what we can see in the sonography is there is a true gestational sac in which the embryo is live the fetus is there and the uh, cardiac activity would be present and in some condition there may be a subcurinic hematoma i uh, means uh, from where the fetus is detached from the uterine wall there is a blood the accumulation of blood which lies between the chorion and the decidua so subcurinic hematoma could be seen uh, it may be present or it may not be present because if it is fresh blood that can easily releases and comes out but if it is brownish discharge then it can be collected behind this structure so there may be a subcurinic hematoma but the fetus is live cardiac activity is present so that is indicative of threatened abortion in inevitable abortion the gestational sac is irregular in shape and there is a dead fetus that indicate yes this is inevitable abortion and in incomplete abortion what happen there may be a retained product of conception because mostly most of the conceptions 
comes out but some remain in the cavity or in cervical canal or the vagina so uh, that can be seen by the sonography that the retained products are still in the cavity that indicate uh, that this is the type of incomplete abortion and in complete abortion what you can find nothing is left inside because all things are comes out so cavity remain empty and the endometrial lining is also become thin as the destua sludges off so the lining is also no more remain thick so this thin lining and the cavity is completely empty so that uh, assures us that the type of abortion is complete one and in missed abortion what happened again we can find out the dead fetus or there are certain criteria in sonography that if these criteria is met then it indicate the non viable pregnancy or early pregnancy loss so in sonography if we are getting more than equal to 25 mm uh, mean sac diameter without any embryo or fetus inside that or there may be a crown rump length that is more than equal to 7 mm crown rump length it means the height from the head to the buttock so if the height is more than equal to 7 mm and without any cardiac activity with this crown rump length then also it indicates the fetus is non viable the pregnancy is not viable inside and the last feature is the management so in management part the threatened abortion could be managed only by expectant management where we cannot give any intervention only suggest the woman to take pelvic rest it means completely abstaining from sexual intercourse avoid strenuous activities like running jumping and jogging so this is the only treatment that we can suggest and it is uh, seen in many of the studies that by alone this expectant management the pregnancy reaches till term so in threatened no medication is to be given only expectant management where we can suggest pelvic rest to women then in inevitable abortion incomplete abortion and in missed abortion there is a three treatment of choice expectant management medical management and surgical management expectant management where we are not giving an intervention just waiting for pregnancy to terminate its own without giving any intervention whether it is inevitable incomplete or missed to resolve automatically but individual uh, types have their own risk so we must be uh, explain these all risks to women and their families because this all management depends on their choice as well as the condition of the woman so expectant management could be given medical management can be advised where we can administer drug that is mesoprostol which is prostaglandin e1 analog that uh, make the cervix soft cervical ripening could be taken place with this use of drug and it also allows the uterine contraction so with this combined effect the remaining conceptus products can be expelled out from the cavity so the drug of choice is the drug that is most preferably used is the mesoprostol and in surgical management the gold standard technique is suction and evacuation so in this technique the vacuum is created to suck all the product of conceptus from the cavity and evacuate the cavity okay so all together we are evacuating emptying the uterine cavity by creating a vacuum and suck out all the product of conceptus so all these can be depend on the woman's choice as well as her present condition whether she is stable or not her vitals are stable or not hemodynamically she is stable or not or she is compliant to these all treatment or not okay what she wants this all matters a lot so this is the treatment of choice in three of the type and the last one is the complete abortion where all conceptus all product of conceptus comes out nothing left remain in the cavity so what we can suggest is nothing to intervene means we can't give any other medication or any surgical method to evacuate because nothing is left inside the cavity so 
as such as long as the woman is stable she is not bleeding more uh, her vitals are stable so in such condition we we will not intervene women any more with any mean of treatment medical or surgical but the most important thing is in either of the type of abortion we must counsel the woman at any cost because this is the very important part in the management as the woman loses her pregnancy so these are the features that on the basis of these all we can differentiate that which type of spontaneous abortion is that okay so the key features that we have discussed here are the definition the bleeding and the pain pervaginal examination with the height of or the size of the uterus transvaginal sonography and the management on the basis of that we have discussed here the important points in the different type of abortion thank you